Hi, I'm Ruben Farland, and I'd like to show you how to create a very simple model in Simulo. So let's start. Um, and first, we'll have a look at the software itself and how it's structured. So this is normal desktop software. And at the top, you see the usual things you have in a, in a desktop software menu, like new file, open a file, recent files, things like that. Um, you have here an edit menu uh, with all of the usual stuff from software, like copy and paste, uh, things like that, a preferences section. And then you have an extensive uh, help section. So the software itself is divided always into two parts, the left part and the right part. And the left part shows you all of the different entities available when you're designing your study and when you're defining your study. While on the right, you have the details for a specific part. So on the left, we have several different screens available. We have the drug model, which is where you're probably spend, gonna spend most of your time. And then we have all of the aspects that relate to the clinical trial protocol, the enrollment, how many patients will we have, the schedules, when things happen, treatments, what you're actually gonna inject, uh, observations, what you will observe, and then the protocol. And of course, you have a window to do the actual simulations. And afterwards, there are still two extra windows available here, the analysis window, where you can do some post-processing, and the scenarios window, where you can define alternative scenarios, uh, like I want to now simulate with 200 subjects instead of 300. So we're gonna, for this exercise, stay in the drug model. And let's define the most basic model that I can think of, a one compartment model. But to make it interesting, I'm going to add an oral absorption. So to do that, I'm gonna start in the structural equations and I will add two structural equations. So two ODEs. The first one I'm going to call apps for absorption. The second I'm going to call central for the central compartment. And so the derivative value of this absorption compartment, well, that's just minus Ka times the absorption. So the absorption rate times the absorption. And then the central compartment has this flow inside and then using an elimination, a flow outside. And what you can immediately see is that these have turned to red. And on the bottom, you see our evaluation failed for central with the following method, object Ka not found. What happens is that while, am I, type, while I am typing continuously in the background, Simulo is executing the study and showing me the actual errors. So let's fix these errors and create my Ka and Ke. To do that, I will select the model parameters section. I will create these parameters in the model parameters section. So a Ka and a Ke. And immediately you see, as soon as these two are defined, that these entities become valid again. Great. We don't have any issue right now. So already I can do a very quick simulation, a play simulation, to see how my model behaves and how it looks like. So for the central, you can just go to edit and then live view. And now I am showing the, set, the amount in the central compartment over time. And of course, it's a straight line. So let's add the treatment. I'm going to add a treatment of 50. I'm going to inject it into the absorption compartment at time zero. And what you see is that it still remains a straight line. Well, why is that? It's because we don't have any absorption yet. So let's make this 0 0.5. And now we see, oh yeah, I have some absorption. Okay, I still need some elimination. Well, I'm gonna add 0 0.5 here or 0 0.3, let's say. And great, I have this typical curve. To make the curve a little bit nicer, I'm going to here add increase the time resolution. This will give me more points. I'm going to plot a line. Okay. So right now, honestly, we already have a very simple model that works. There's still something missing, and it is the nonlinear mixed effects part, especially the mixed effects part. I need a population model. So to do that, well, the first thing that I'm going to do is here simulate 10 subjects, and of course they will all have the same curve, but because this is continuously updating, 
while we are implementing, you will see this graph change. And now I'd like to add uh, a population effect to my Ka. So to do that, I will define my typical value for Ka, which would be here. So the typical value for Ka, and let's say that this is 0 0.5, and I will have some variability, and I will define that in the subject variability. Now, for the first time, instead of using an expression, I will use this button here, and that's a continuous variability. It's something you sample. So let's add this. I'm going to call this eta Ka. So a typical eta is a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of, well, let's say in this case, we have a standard deviation of 30% on our Ka. You can't see anything yet because we still need to adapt the formula for Ka here. So I'm going to say, well, this is TV Ka times the exponent or the exponential for eta Ka. And look and behold, great. We now have an inter-individual variability on Ka. Let me quickly add the other parts. So a clearance and a volume. Let's say the clearance is uh, well, five liters per hour. Let's say the volume is 10. I'm going to add a comment here just to remember that this was indeed in liters and this was indeed in liters per hour. And I will add here another eta, one eta for V1 and an eta for clearance. I'm going to mo move these together. And that way I would also be able here in the bottom to define a correlation between these etas. Well, Right now, I'm going to keep it simple. Let's say V1 has an inter-individual variability that is quite low, but the clearance has an inter-individual variability that is quite high. There we go. So let's add this volume and clearance. So a volume and a clearance. A typical value of volume plus my eta for volume typical value for clearance and the eta for clearance. There we go. And now we can redefine my Ke to be the clearance over the volume. And great, we see all of this inter-individual variability appear. Now there are still, still two things missing from my exercise. The first thing is I'd like to add a covariate weight and add some allometric scaling based on that weight. And the second thing is I'd like to add my concentration and, of course, my concentration with residual error. So let's start first by introducing the body weight. Well, to introduce this weight, I would add it into the population covariate. So again, this is something that is sampled. Let me call this body weight. Here in this case, well, it will be a mean of 70, standard deviation of 15. But I'm going to cut off this distribution between 50 and 150. And so here in the volume, let's add body weight divided by 70. There we go. To the power of one. And here the uh, body weight divided by 70 to the power of 0 0.75. Great. Now the last thing that I'd like to do is here in event variability at the concentration, as well as the concentration with error. So the first thing is I'm going to define my error. And let's say that this model has a log normal error uh, of about, well, I don't know, 30%. And then I'm going to add two expressions. Well, the first one will be the concentration. So the concentration in this case is the central the amount in the central compartment divided by the volume. And the concentration with error is, of course, my concentration together with my error. And now, here in this view, I can choose to instead show not the central compartment, but my concentration. That looks something like this. So great. 
or I could even show my concentration with error. And of course, that's something that kind of bounces around the place. And of course, this can already be useful, for example, to try out instead of giving 50 to give two milligrams per kilo. So the actual dose would be two times the body weight. And you can nicely see, well, this would group uh, a lot of the C maxes closer together because, uh, of course, the volume is uh, dependent on the body weight. Okay, that's it for now. Um, maybe it's just interesting to note that here on the left, you can see the whole, the full model description. It's actually really straightforward. It makes it really easy to communicate this whole model to somebody else. In the next session, we will add the trial protocol. And we will also uh, look at a much more advanced example uh, that includes dose adaptation and things like that. Thank you for watching. See you next time.